are a few machines so rare and highly prized among collectors, about the only way to find one is to scour flea markets in Taiwan. The SG-1000, and it put one of the world's great game companies on the map. Ah, the flea market. Home of hookahs, hula hoops, and if you're lucky, history. Game history, that is. Like the sought-after console that, in its heyday, kicked off one of the most glorious runs in video game history. Here's how. The 1940s. An outfit known as Service Games makes coin-operated games for American servicemen stationed overseas. Company Brass decides to shorten the name. Sega is born. Fast forward four decades. Sega conquers the video arcade. Next mission? Port their arcade hits into the living room. They see what a little company named Atari could do with their console and try to one-up the 2600 with slightly better specs. After two years of work, Sega drops their first console on Japan, the SG-1000, retailing for 15,000 yen, about 125 US bucks. The SG-1000, what it represented is really significant in retrospect. The biggest thing in its favor is that it was a Sega console, so it offered people the ability to play a lot of Sega arcade games, which, you know, were on a lot of different consoles, but this was Sega's creation, so they played best on the SG-1000. Like these three, Ninja Princess. In this action-adventure title, you play a deadly heroine who slices and dices her way through feudal Japan. The brutal challenge delights hardcore players in its 1984 console release, based on one of Sega's most popular arcade cabinets, Sega Ninja. In keeping with the girl power theme, Girl's Garden from 1984. Gathering flowers to impress your boyfriend isn't the manliest of storylines, but hey, this game features a challenge big enough to make a grown man cry. Oh yeah, Girl's Garden is the first game created by Yuji Naka, who would eventually make Sega's spiny mammal mascot, Sonic. So what do you get when you cross Pac-Man and a car from Rally X? What else? 1983's Pac-Car. Another winner for the SG-1000. The mission here is basically the same as Pac-Man's. Collect pellets, but make sure to stay alert, race fans. Your enemies are serious tailgaters. Nearly 100 games in all make the SG-1000 a force to be reckoned with in Japan. Oddly, it never reaches the US. But in 1984, Sega advertises and unveils a follow-up to the SG known as the Mark II, marrying the game console to the personal computer and sprouting a big, global family tree. Mark II begat Mark III, begat Master System, begat Mega Drive, aka Genesis, which for one historic moment would run all over Nintendo's 95% market share monster. A host of other cousins culminate in a family reunion featuring Sega's last console, Dreamcast, in 1999. The most sought after of the bunch? Their forefather. I think the SG-1000 is really uh, attractive to collectors because there's a lot of really diehard Sega fans out there who want to see everything that they've ever made and want to make sure that they can trace their history throughout the beginning. And so that's why you see a lot of hunting around for SG-1000. So classic Sega stuff, you know, it's always kind of, uh, it's getting up there now these days. Try 350 bucks in some places, making the SG-1000 a flea market favorite. One of the only consoles of its era demanding such a markup from the original price. This little machine has a permanent place in game history.